What's going on, people? Welcome to Otanime, episode 16. I'm your host, Tony Polanco, and I'm joined by Michael Crawford, a.k.a. Rika's son, one, the only one. What's good, everyone? Loray Williams. You know who he is, the manga god in the building. <laughs> Emilio Lopez. Why, hello there. Chris Seeley. Hey, what's up, everyone? And Carlos Romero. What is up, people? All right, people, uh, let's jump right into it because it's very late for us right now. Oh, you know, anime we've been watching. Riku, start us off, please. Anime I've been watching. Um, I finished a, a, a quite a few anime uh, for, what is it, uh, April? So uh, some of them were Ajin. I don't know if you heard of that one. I mentioned it uh, a couple. Ah, uh, yes, the, the, the Netflix series. Netflix, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I watched that one too. Yeah, I think I recommended that to you, and you kind of ignored it. So. <laughs> oh shit! I heard that. No, I know. I wanted to find for the scene of the face. Yeah, I'm just saying. I remember last episode. I was like, oh, I know you like him. Um, I don't know, you can try it. I just be like, mm, man. <laughs> but uh, yeah, hey, listen, maybe. I did take your suggestion though. I mean, it seems like you forgot that I suggested it, and then you just watched it anyway. That's what it sounds like. <laughs> no, I took your suggestion. Oh my God, that's okay. But, uh, yeah, Ajin, recently, I think uh, yesterday, they announced that it's in the season two. I love you, man. <laughs> We done? We done here? We done? Can we continue with the show? I can't stop please, laughing because the rain won't stop. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think he's laughing because I actually, um, I think like a week or two ago, he came to me talking about Ajin, and I told him the exact same thing. I was like, oh yeah, I mentioned Ajin under, on o- Otanime like two episodes ago. So like, December's episode or something? And I was like, oh, there's, there's, a, there's, yeah, a, there's an anime called Ajin about to come out, and everyone was like, Okay. <laughs> you, you, you were saying you were saying you were you were saying yeah. at the time you were saying yeah this is going to be an actual Netflix you know mm-hmm. show it's not going to be like the like um um fairy, the, the, that other series that that I suggested Sudonia? yeah mm. that's funny whereas essentially I, it's just a show that was just you know put on Netflix well I think I mentioned the fact that it was done by the same animation studio Polygon mm-hmm. Pictures that's what yeah. I said. But uh, that just got announced for season two, like a two days ago. So we're getting season two on that. Um, some people, some people are iffy on the ending of how season one ended, and then some people are like, mm. uh, yeah, it kind of just leaves you hanging." Yeah, and then some people are like, "If you were, if you're gonna get into Ajin, you're better off watching the movies because everyone's like, the movies they kept it like at a nice pace because as far as when I was watching it." I thought the episode one for Ajin was good, and episode like two through like you know, you know the rest of them was just I don't know. It was it was it for me. Some of them were good, and then some of them were just like you know. It, it kind of it kind of lost the momentum. Like yeah, it did. you had that mo- the first one, which was like, oh shit, you know, someone dies, and blah, blah, they explain all this, you know, how the Ajin or you know they work. Yeah. And then after that, it just kind of, you know, it, there's no urgency to it. It's like, okay, the government is chasing after him, but... I know, when I, I know where I lost my interest. I lost my interest when the character Kai went missing. Right. Like, they just took him out of the picture. Yeah, yeah like, what happened to him? What, what happened to him? Like, that's his best I, friend. I, I think, no another thing that threw me off was the character development of the main character. You know, he's like, you, you think that he's this nice guy. You know, the whole time, like, doesn't, mm-hmm. and then, like, his sister all of a sudden says, my brother's a jerk. That all of a sudden, the motherfucker goes and acts like an asshole out of nowhere. I mean, and it's not even on some, like, Ken Kaneki type of, like, character change. He was just... He, he turned just, it, he turned into fucking, um, he, not L, he turned into freaking light all of a sudden. <laughs> Well, I mean, there was one. There was only person. one thing you could defend with him when it came to it, because remember he 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 got locked in that um that experimental chair, and mm-hmm. you know he's all tied up, and that's that's kind of like once he escaped from from there, that's kind of when it happened. So 
Granted, that happened for him to change but, it. But then again, yeah. like when when he like first got out and the guy talked to him, he was like, "Humans are our enemies," you know, yeah. our enemy. He still believed in that, and then like all of a sudden, like you know, it, it wasn't him being a jerk to humans. It was just him being a jerk to like other Ajin. You know, just like he was being. A, came in and whatnot. They lost he, him fucking, he fucking killed like he fucking killed him. He's like, oh well, and he didn't know that he was an Ajin. He was like, oh well, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> it was like once he finally gets Arjun, the first thing he tries to do is to fucking kill him and to like put him in like the fucking um, the back of a uh, mm. semi truck. You know. It yeah, just... it's just like this show. I remember when I first you know read the premise of the show, and then from the manga readers who have been this up before the anime even started, you know, everyone was comparing it to two other shows that you know were getting a lot of hype around that time, which was Parasite and Tokyo Ghoul. And I, then, I could definitely feel that. I got. I, I also got a bit of um, uh, Elf and Lead from it, too. Mm, I could see that. Um, but yeah, it's just like, when you're in that genre against those two, you know, behemoths, you gotta really bring it. You can't even be, you can't even be average, like, because when you, you're instantly gonna be compared to both Parasite and Tokyo Ghoul, and when you are Man, it just you know it doesn't look. Right. And then you know we got the you know half of the fan base how they feel about CG and whatnot. And I honestly, even though I don't mind CG, I definitely think this is the type of series that would would have probably been better if it wasn't. Yeah, I mean there's some there's some really great there's some good moments in there that could have really been some great animation. But it's just like even like the like, <clears throat> it just seems like everything doesn't. Like especially the, the you know the kind of spirit form that they have, it, it just seems yeah. kind of weak. I yeah. think what's the weakest thing is that they didn't take the opportunity to have more Arjun fight each other. They just like like the guy showcases his ability against regular humans. I'm like cool. The guy with the hat, like they just keep on shooting him over and over and over and over again, mm. and then he finally breaks out and just slaughters them. Like cool. The one well, I think the only thing as far as like. As far as I can remember, that even interested me when it came to the Ajin was when the main character was in the forest and he was trying to figure out, you know, why his Ajin was acting so weird. That was probably the only part in the show where I felt interested in. Oh yes. You know, Ajin, yeah. cause, you know, his mm -hmm. Ajin was. Like, I agree. Um, disobeying him and then, you know, bashing against trees and just doing all this weird stuff and that. Doing was the actually what he's saying. Yeah. Yeah, and I was I, I was interested in all of that, but. I mean, as far as this season is concerned, it went, you know, it went nowhere. So, I mean, that's what I, I am going to watch season two and see what that's about. But my expectations are definitely a lot lower now. And oh my goodness, this season was short too. It ended, like, I felt like there was, wasn't really a climax, you know? Yeah, like I said, I felt, I felt this series, um, as far as where they decided to end it, as far as a, like a season, it, it wasn't a season finale type of moment, but they just had to end it here because this is how many episodes they had, you know? How many episodes did they have? I think it was 12. Yeah, it was okay. 12. Something okay, like so... Yeah, yeah, it's like you look one, at Parasite. One... Parasite was 24. Yeah, but I mean... Rule. Even Tokyo Ghoul did better with 12, and then Tokyo Ghoul... Even Knights, of, Sid even Knights of Sidonia, like, that one was pretty short, too, and they did a pretty decent job of giving you kind of a ending that just, okay, I want some more of this, you know? Yeah, because 12 episodes shouldn't be that bad, you know? It no. Be. But like I said, when you start to introduce characters and then you just leave them there hanging, and then you remove the characters that you developed for, the, like, the first quarter to show, like Kai, it's just that's where it loses its, like, interest in continuity, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, Kai was a fucking badass. Yeah, Kai was cool, and he wasn't even an Asian. He was just, you know, a regular cat, and he was... Yeah. He was well, I mean, we don't know if he's an Ajahn. So. I mean, we don't know, and I hope I... That's Honestly, I think that's the main reason why I want to watch it. I want to see if Kai comes back. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, I... Uh, yeah, Ajahn, I just... Because I, this... After I finished the uh, the anime of the month, I just... I kind of went back and, you know, started to finish stuff I put on hold, and Ajahn was one of the things I did put on hold, because mm -hmm. I was like... When I heard Netflix got it, and they got it in an English dub, that's usually... That's usually my ind indication that I can I can binge watch this show now. It's in dub, you know. Yeah. And I was watching it weekly when it first came out, and then like I said, it was like a quarter in, and I was like, I'm not really feeling this. And that's just, it, it, 
it, like that ending, man. It just felt like because I didn't actually look at how many episodes it was, but mm-hmm. I'm just like then once it stops, I'm like, okay, I'm ready for the next episode, and yeah, then wait, there's no more. <laughs> That's exactly how I felt. I was like, like just, when, you know, when Netflix is like, okay, shows you can watch. That's yeah. what to this. I'm like, what the fuck? There's no more episodes. It, just, it literally pulled the plug before, before right, right at the instant it was getting a little more interesting. Yeah, as soon as the guy says, I'm going to take over the country. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, and then it's just like, okay, there, it felt like there should have been one more episode for that climactic finish, and then it wasn't there. Yeah. You know, it feels like, you know how um, American TV shows do where they have, they leave you on a ginormous cliffhanger until they come back, and then they hit you with that big episode for its premiere return? Oh, yeah. yeah, shows like that. It was just like, it felt like they were trying to do that, but you know that they didn't, that wasn't like a conscious decision. But, um... Yeah, Ajin, Ajin, uh, like I said, I, I had to go and binge watch it when it was uh, dubbed because that's usually how I do do the stuff. Another series I did that was, was uh, Orari no Seraph, Seraph of the End, mm-hmm. season two. That's another series I put on hold, and then, you know, when it got its dub and it was all done, I uh, went back and finished that. So, Ajin, Seraph of the End, and then, you know, the stuff that's airing right now, so, like, the new stuff. Um, another thing that recently ended was Mobile Suit Gundam Thunderbolt. Now that shit right there, that's amazing. That's amazing right there. You might want to watch that one. That's that's only four episodes, 18 minutes each. They really give you a, a, a really nice, compact story that you, honestly, you really don't need like um, that much knowledge of Gundam to extremely enjoy this one. Like if you know a little bit about UC, Char, and Amro just a little bit, you're fine. You can oh, watch. Oh shit, that's cool. It's, it's, yeah, it's it's phenomenal. It's probably yeah. A, a lot of people are saying this is probably the best um, best thing Gundam related that has come out in years. Yeah. So I would yeah. I would yeah. I would, I would Next would Yeah, people are some people prefer it over Unicorn. And mm. Wow. That's almost blasphemy right there. <laughs> Um, I actually, I probably would have it like right behind Unicorn. Mm. Right behind it make, it. But did it make you cry? It almost. <laughs> I was getting teary eyed. I was getting teary eyed because they got some. God damn, that last episode, man. That How's the music? Crazy. Um, honestly, the music for this one. Oh yeah, the music is actually pretty good because you know they had the the whole jazz thing going on. Um, the two characters they have their own type of, like their their excuse for playing jazz while they're playing uh piloting their mobile suits is the fact that they don't want to hear all of this um, death on the mic. They don't want to hear all of this screams and death because that's all they hear when they're in war. So they kind of like use jazz Dude, as a white noise. So they does, just, the, uh, does the jazz music pace the fight? You know, like the tempo yeah, crooked yeah, stuff? Yeah, it does. It's pretty It's pretty cool how they, how they did that. You had to make me go watch this anime like right now. Yeah, like I said, you're you're not the knowledge you need for that series. It's it, you really don't need that much because it, it really does keep its story, you know, compact and out there. So you could just go in there. They give you characters. You understand these characters, and then it uh, you know, it wraps it up. But like I said, I, the only reason I have it just a little bit lower than uh, Unicorn is because it's only four episodes, man, eighteen minutes, like. It doesn't even have an intro or an well, it has an outro, so that is probably even less than 18 minutes. But it doesn't have an intro, like they just go straight into it. It's a it's an original net animation, so you know it, it didn't even air on TV. But man, I I wish I know they're they're remaking this. They're making they're giving it like a movie, just like you know how uh, Gundam did, where they just took all of the originals and they just gave it three movies. They yeah. Doing that with this one, uh, they're just giving it one movie and just. C- connect all of the four episodes together and then release it. So you can do that when that comes up also. But that's pretty dope. Thunderbolt. That that one was amazing. Um, Boku no Hero Academia. That's amazing. Dragon Ball Super is getting good. They finally uh, they recently finished the arc, so we're actually moving into some new shit now. Nice. And uh, Kosetsu Jo no Kabaneri, the uh, Attack on Titan uh, like anime. That one's really good too. What's it called? Good. Kotetsu Joe no Cabinary? Cabinary mm. of the Iron Fortress. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, someone was telling me to watch that. 
Yeah, that one's that one's really good too. I think that's only like three episodes in. And uh, yeah, Mobile Suit Gundam Unicorn uh, Re 0096. That one's actually, um, as far as the pacing, Manny, they actually did. They actually made like you remember. I remember you said uh, like a couple months ago. You, your little gripe about Unicorn was that the beginning was. Um, yeah, slow. yeah. Un- Unicorn is a is a tough watch on the, when you that first one. Yeah. Once this, it gets started, it just keeps rolling. Yeah, I felt it was the opposite for this one. Uh, they they hop straight into it when it came to episode one. They really wanna they really wanted the line to people in with that episode one and even episode two. I felt I felt this one, you know, since they have twenty, I think they have twenty five episodes to get this one done. Actually, the pacing is actually really good around the beginning when it comes to this one. To actually, explain. I feel like I understand the characters and their backstories a little bit better than I did in the OVAs. And they went back and they reanimated some scenes, even though it, it looked I'm like a masterpiece already. They went back and made it look even better. I was like, wow. They had some people had like side by side comparisons. Like this one looks like really good, and then this one just looked even better than how it previously looked. So that's probably. That's probably my most enjoyable thing I'm watching weekly is that. I thought it was going to be JoJo's. But JoJo's like right behind it now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But that's that's about it. That's what I've been watching. All right, um, Carlos, man, what have you been watching? So the usual stuff, I've been watching One Piece, um, uh, Boku no Hero Academia. That's really good. I, I really like that the protagonist is um, like really not that confident. Normally when you watch Shonen... The protagonist is like uber confident. Mm-hmm. They're kind of like, like or something. <laughs> what's up? They will be like Bakugo. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and it, and one thing that pisses me off a lot is that they compare this a lot to One Punch Man. I mean, I know it's inevitable to compare it because it's two superhero shows, but mm-hmm. they're completely different. Completely shows. different. Yeah. Their story is way more fleshed out. Yeah, and but uh, so far I've been enjoying it. I think it's. Four or five episodes in. Um, yeah, five. I I bought a new TV and uh, I put um Kiss Anime on on that and it's a 4K TV and I put a Boku no Hero episode and my God that shit looked almost 4K like I was like mm-hmm. wow it looked that good. So Man, Carlos, you got money to blow. <laughs> buying yeah. 4K TVs, buying anime from Animplex, man, God. <laughs> And buying buying anime from Netflix is way more impressive than a TV because they fucking overprice everything. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I've been oh I caught up with a uh, Dragon Ball Super so I watched the first four episodes when when they came out and decided to catch up with that and I think we're all like forty episodes thirty nine episodes something like that. Um, there's this one part that really pissed me off and almost made me stop watching it again before. I don't know if this is a spoiler, but I don't know. I'm gonna say it anyways. Before, okay. before the, <laughs> before the the tournament happens, um, mm-hmm. of the two universes, my favorite. Well, well, we just three, tournament? Huh? <laughs> I'm just playing. <laughs> it's a key to Toriyama, man. There's, there's a tournament. There's always a tournament. It's Akita. He loves his tournaments. I think the only person that does tournaments as much as him is Togashi. Togashi, yeah. <laughs> Well, you know how they're recruiting they're recruiting the, the fighters to get into the the freaking the universe six, right? Yeah. And who the person who used oh, to be my Lord. favorite character, I was <laughs> like, this is where this character is gonna redeem himself. Oh Lord. But I'm like, I can't go, I gotta go to a conference, sorry. And I'm like, <laughs> man, I'm about to mm. Yeah, man. He fucking yeah. decided not to join that fight. So you can join a fight. Oh, no, remember. You saw how the most recent episode ended now. And so I haven't just, seen the last one. Ah, uh, damn it, bro. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 I'm not going to say anything. But, uh, yeah, don't lose hope. Don't lose hope just yet. Watch that most recent episode. Okay. So, yeah, so I, um, so I almost decided not to, like, to not keep watching it, but I, I kept going. And that tournament stuff, was it's pretty good, especially the, the part with Hit. That part, the yeah. fights with head is really good. That's 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 the Dragon Balls like that we deserve fairly. Yeah, that fight. Yeah, that that yeah. ending like that yeah. was some like that move he did at the end. That's something that they they're gonna put in the video game because it's just that yeah. different and unique. As it went it went to that type of level. 
so pretty much for everyone that's pretty cautious about Dragon Ball Super, if if you watch the movies, just skip ahead to that tournament, and you can you're better off than just watching the first couple of uh, like thirty or so episodes. Oh, okay. That's good to know because that's what made me stop watching the series when they got to the fucking first movie with um that fucking Emperor peel off. I'm like, fuck this shit, <laughs> you know, <laughs> fuck this. So yeah, that's good to know. Yeah, and he's he's. He's still there. Who, Pilaf? Like a center, well, you know. I haven't seen Pilaf in a while. Well, I'm saying, like, after the, like, I guess during the events of the movie, like, he's he's prominently there. Like, yeah, he shows up every I'm saying as far as, like, the Universe 6 arc. Oh, no, no, no. He's, I haven't seen him yet, so. Yeah, yeah that, I mean, if that's where you're telling them to skip to, then, I mean, no more Pilaf, technically. Yeah. Yeah, I just need to watch the the Frieza movie. I haven't watched that because of how much I didn't like the the one before that. You know, mm. like this is stupid. And then I'm like, why are you bringing Frieza back? It's like really, you know. But I don't know. I'll, yeah. I'll watch that movie and then I'll skip to episode thirty of this. Yeah, because you know? the TV version of that whole Frieza sh- stuff it was it was pretty uh, bad. Uh, it was horrible, oh, man. man. Yeah, so I wouldn't. Yeah, I definitely wouldn't recommend that. That's crazy. Anyway, yeah, anything least- else, dude? Yeah, so um, I watched uh, uh, like two or three episodes of Gintama. It's still going. It's still good. <laughs> but I'm, I'm, t- I'm going at a snail's pace on that one. But uh, and uh, Cabinary of the Iron Fortress. That's the the one from the creators of Attack on Titan Riku mentioned earlier, and yeah, that that's really good. Like I'm really surprised this season we, we've had some pretty good anime. Yeah. But other than that, uh, that's pretty much it. All right, uh, Luray, man, what you been watching? I've been watching Anjan. You know, I already know how I feel about that man. Uh, and it may, you know, had a lot of potential. I like his premise. Um, it just didn't um, execute that well. Um, the biggest anime of the season, well, one of the biggest anime of the season. I've been hearing everyone that uh, that has been reading the manga that said that the anime isn't doing it justice. Because you know how, uh, you know how art some certain mangaka come with their art style and they, their manga just looks amazing and then when it comes to anime, the anime can't like adapt that same quality over. Mm-hmm. So, manga god, you might want to consider just <laughs> migrating over. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> that. So, no. as far as I've been hearing from the manga guys, they're, they're completely satisfied as far as what they're reading and they, they don't, they can't co-sign the anime. Mm-hmm. That reminds me of something else that I've been Yeah, yeah go right ahead. I mean, sure. That segue. <laughs> um, I've been reading Tokyo Ghoul. I know that's not um, anime, but like, um, just to compare it to the anime, like, yeah. just like it's completely different. The story, the characters, how they all portrayed is completely different from the manga. I don't know how it like ended the way it did, but read the manga if you didn't like Tokyo Ghoul. Even if you like Tokyo Ghoul, read the manga. So, Larry, um, going back to like what Riku talked about earlier. Uh, was Kaneki's uh, conversion per se more detailed in the manga than in the anime? Because that's something that really threw me the hell off. That I I didn't know what, why yes. he changed the way he did. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think Larey mentioned when he got caught up with Tokyo Ghoul. This is his favorite manga of all time now. Oh shit! Wow. And yeah. oh, Riku, did I tell you that I'm all caught up to the. Yeah, I saw your Twitter. I saw your tweet. You were like, "What to do in life now, or something." <laughs> yes, I'm in, like, you know, when you finish a series or something and you empty because mm-hmm. you don't have anything to do with the void. Mm-hmm. Like, that's took your goal for me right now. Like, yeah. I'm caught up to like I finished the main series and I'm on to the sequel and I'm caught up to the sequel. Mm-hmm. So, I, it's no joke with Tokyo Ghoul, Carlos. Yeah, because I remember when the first season of the anime came out, everyone was hyping it, and it was and it was pretty decent. I mean, it wasn't the best thing ever, and I just remember season two just threw me off, along with the whole yeah, censoring yeah. stuff. The, mm-hmm. Oh my goodness, dude! Like, okay, so after season like season one was is vaguely kind of like the manga, mm-hmm. you know, but like the manga is way more descriptive. You get more better impressions of the characters. The Kaneki torture scene has more meaning to it and how he changed or why he changed at that mm-hmm. moment. And, um, you know, and, like, after season one, it diverged completely. Like, root, root A probably stands for, like, root, 
we're going a separate way. <laughs> so, um, I I highly recommend that. Like, it's a very short read. It's only like a hundred and forty eight chapters. Right. For Tokyo Ghoul. And how many the, um, pages per um, chapter for Tokyo Ghoul? Um, I would say that there's like thirty. Thirty pages. Oh, okay. Thirty pages, real quick read. Um, Tokyo Ghoul read is the same thing. It's like seventy five chapters in right now. Mm. Um, that's it. But yeah, get that a try if you haven't. Um, let's see what what else I've been watching. Joseph's Bizarre Adventure. Um, Diamonds Unbreakable. Mm, how do you feel about that? How do I feel about that? Well, I feel. I feel like it's a great anime. I like it. It's um, I feel it. Are you caught up or you you only seen the? <laughs> I'm not I caught like... up already. I've seen like three episodes. Mm. So I really like the um, let's see, what's his name? Josuke. Josuke? Yeah. Okay, yeah. and like how I like how Jotaro returns. You know, it's like just like the previous jo- Jojo Jojo uh, comes and helps out the other Jojo. I don't know if it's that way in um, the next one, Riku. Part three? Yeah. Yeah. No, part... Which part are we on now? Part five. We're in part four. Part four? Is it like that in part five? Like the previous Jojo comes out and like helps out the other one? Yeah, it's like that in... It's like that in part three, four, five, and six. Okay, that's pretty dope. So I'm looking forward to how they're going to do that in the next one, but... um, but yeah, I'm liking like the monster, kind of like the monster of the week, like the which ten user are we gonna fight this time? Yeah, that's a, that's one thing about JoJo's. I like I like I, I'm not really a fan of like you know enemy of the week or episodic type things, but JoJo's really does it well. Like, yeah, I think it's it's not that I don't like it. I think it's more about your execution uh, more than anything, and they mm-hmm. just they just nail it when it comes to that because they still keep it. They still have a continuity, and they're like a character grows and and that stays for you know the next episode. I yeah. close on that for like almost every yeah every episode. Yeah, just like the, um, just like that one. Those two brothers, like you know, in yeah. the beginning of the first episode, you like you see them like you fucking hate them. You're like, what the fuck is horror going mm-hmm. on with these guys? But like the next episode, you like, okay, I feel it. You know, yeah. I feel bad for these guys. So you can see that guy get snatched up. You're like, no. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So yeah, like the enemies easily can become, you know, one of your most likable characters in the anime, and that's some good ass writing. That's yeah. all I gotta say for that. Um, yeah. Um, the next anime I've been watching is Boku no Hero Academia. Mm-hmm. Um, arguably the biggest anime of the season compared to. The only anime that can arguably be better than it is JoJo's. And I'm thinking that people feel in Boku no Hero Academia more than JoJo's because sometimes I feel people feel like JoJo's may be too weird for them. You know? think? As far as I'm here, everyone that's watching both of them, they prefer JoJo's over Boku no Hero. Really? But the, problem, the problem is uh, there's far more people watching Boku no Hero than JoJo's Part 4 because obviously when oh, yeah, you Part have to 4 starts... Watch- Everyone's like, uh, I haven't seen part three, two, or one, so I'm probably not gonna watch it. But yeah, I'm the audience, I feel it. People need to learn that like JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, like you can start off at any arc, you'd be decent, you know. There's some stuff you're gonna miss. Um, especially yeah. on the arcs that I wouldn't, have, <laughs> I wouldn't recommend it. <laughs> but like, it's like like I don't know, I'm talking about like arcs that's like one off, like this one. This is like yeah. I call this like a side story arc. You know, because it doesn't have to deal with DO. Yeah. You think you think if it doesn't have to do with you, it's not really that important, because he's technically dead. Mm. Got to move on, you know. There's other is, trust is me. The antagonist the, for part four is, is, is the man. Is the I ain't gonna I ain't gonna say nothing, right? I ain't gonna say nothing. But all I'm gonna say is the villain for part four. He deserves some like he deserves a fucking. He's probably just. The second best villain I've seen in all of the parts of that. Who's the first villain, though? Obviously, Dio. But we can't. My problem is that you can't stick, you can't stay on Dio. Like, oh, it's all about Dio. Like, come on, man. We got some really uh, good it's, villains. Like, Cars was really good though, in part two. But the thing is, though, we wouldn't be here without Dio. That's true. 
I'm, uh, like I said, I mean, what do you want? It, continuously do deal and. <laughs> no, I'm just saying. I'm just saying though. I mean, because we've seen that with Frieza, and now look where we are with Frieza. Like everyone's like, ah, oh, can we get another fucking villain? I'm sick and tired of Frieza. Frieza's back once again. Oh, but you know? the thing is, though, like that's what JoJo's all about, though. It's about like this heated feud between this bloodline of people and this one guy that cannot die that has this, um, what you call it. This, Unnecessary hatred against them. Yeah, I yeah I understand that. I understand that. But I'm just saying the other stuff that they do have going on is definitely nothing to like say. Oh, it's it's not <laughs> as good as the other. You know, <laughs> some people actually would prefer it. Well, I'm, prefer just, it. I, I'm saying that like um I wasn't saying that per se, but like um I was saying that it's more easier for them to get into because it doesn't have like a more it's more um. He established history heavy less. Yeah, history. I could take that. Because like um, you know, that as far as like if you don't know, let's say you started watching part four and you don't, you obviously don't know who deal is. Yeah. You're gonna get a villain for part four, and you're gonna exactly. you're, they're gonna introduce and explain everything about him all in part four. So there's that. I can give you that. I was just saying as far as from like. You don't know oh, Jotaro, oh, and you don't know his backstory. When you see Jotaro appear, you're not going to get hyped because you don't know who this dude is. <laughs> true. And then true. when you see him do his powers, obviously it's going to spoil oh, you God. because. True, but like at the same time, Josuke is learning about him too. You know, he gets to see yeah. Him. I know. I'm just saying from like you know, um, a nostalgic point of view, you're not going to have that like, connection. Like, yeah. You're not going to yeah. have that connection. And one thing I like to mention about um, Joseph Bizarre Adventure is what the fuck. Is going on with Jotaro's hat. You never know oh. <laughs> where his hair begins, his hair, like, <laughs> his, his hat ends, you know? It's like, okay, he's wearing white now. Now I can tell because his hat's black. No, mm. the motherfucker shades in the back of the hat. That was a joke. But um, basically what happened, I don't know if you know this, in the manga, when he came to um, Hirohiko, and when he was, every time he, you know, because it's obviously in black or white, when he would draw Jotaro's hat, um, when you when you colored it, his first outfit was actually blue. So when his first like cover art was, his his hat is technically like it like stops like where my headset is. That's where his hat <laughs> yeah. stops, and that's where his hair. Begins. So he's wearing he's literally wearing like half a hat on his head. But when it came to drawing that out in black and white, you can't tell. So that's why he would just make it look like how it looks. So when it came to the anime, they decided to just make it look like that also, just to continue the joke. And then in part four, they just they just decided to go with that also, but I know what you mean. It's technically half a hat. <laughs> He's got a hat with an open back. Yeah. I don't even know how it's holding on his head. I don't know how it just doesn't fall <laughs> forward, honestly. Um, did I mention Boku no Hero Academia, right? Yeah. Yes, you did. Okay. Um, the last anime I was watching was um, Big Order. I only watched one episode of it, and it looks pretty decent so far. So I'm looking forward Which to the second episode. Big Order. Oh, Big Order. Okay. So, so yeah, it's basically this guy that makes a rich that almost brought, brings out the destruction on the whole world, and it calls, um, causes everyone, not everyone, but a lot of people to get like these superpowers. That's um, based off their wish. Like, for example, if someone wished to be able to live so they could kill someone, they get the ability to heal themselves. Mm. So, yeah, that, that anime is pretty interesting. Um, Riku didn't like it. He, he I don't say I didn't like it. I was disappointed because this is from the creator. <laughs> he, he was like, I'm dead. <laughs> Only because this is from the creator of Future Diary, and Future Diary is one of my favorite animes of all time. So I went in there with high expectations. And, you know, I went in there looking for a 9, and I actually got, like, a 7. So, like I said, it's not bad, but it's just not great. So, it's like, I would say, I would give it a good, like, a 7. Good. But I was expecting a 9, so that's why I said it's disappointing. Uh-oh. It's not bad. I might, by the time we come back, I probably will have it done and see, see, you know, my full thoughts on that. Mm. Well, that's all I've watched, but, like, I'd like to mention... Uh, ask if anyone wants that new Yu-Gi-Oh movie that came out. They're still doing Yu-Gi-Oh. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, like, yeah. Wait, really? Yu-Gi-Oh? Yeah, hey, I'm so sure still watching it. it. Yeah, the show is still on. Wow. So, crazy. Like funny, uh, actually, a funny thing is a, a good um a good buddy of mine actually works on that show. Oh, wow. <laughs> Two of my buddies work on that show. 
Damn, y'all <laughs> shitting on... Yo, you shitting on his buddies, man. Okay. <laughs> hey, nah, I'm shitting I mean, on Yu-Gi-Oh, man. I'm not shitting on his buddy. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, he, Yo, man. <laughs> my, 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 friend, my friend Sam had uh, literally... He he worked on the localization of Pokemon, and he worked on a localization of um of the Yu-Gi-Oh cartoon. So it's all the same. It's all the same people that are still doing it these Yo, days. Yo, man, is he is he hustling Yu-Gi-Oh cards too, man? Oh god, <laughs> that ain't never gonna die, will it? <laughs> oh my god. So, so, I mean, I would love. I mean, about it. I would love. You know, I would love to get him for the show at some point in the future to just talk about localization and stuff. Yeah, That'd man. be a really cool thing cool. to do. Yeah, thirty minutes, thirty minutes on Yu-Gi-Oh cards. Yeah, I mean he, you know, you know he's he's part of the reason why I know a lot about what happens because I remember, especially when, you know, first I first got my job, my internship at Four Kids. I was like, I was just talking to the guys there, and I was just like, so how come you don't just use the animation, you know, the original anim- the music from the anime? And they're like, well, you know, we would have to uh, essentially we would have to pay the original composer. For the rights to the music, mm-hmm. so and when you put stuff on TV, right? Uh, especially when you put stuff that's pre-trans, you know, that's already been created outside of the, you know, created outside of the country. If you put it on on American TV, you won't. The what happens is you always get residuals, especially you know. Wait, sorry. When you put stuff that's like you know movies and stuff, you get residuals off of it. Like so, if you put like let's say Captain America: Civil War is put on TV or any other channel. Everybody involved in that production gets money off of it, but when mm-hmm. it comes to anime, it's not that way at all because there are no it, it wasn't a, it wasn't part an American production it wasn't Screen Actors Guild and all that bullshit. So what they do is they would essentially create a whole new soundtrack for the show, and then mm-hmm. what they could do is they could make money off of that because every single time that's shown on TV, they get residuals off of that of, off of the off of the soundtrack off of the the music that was made for it too. For, yeah, that was made in the that United States. A lot in the, in so that's why all your favorite, a lot of the favorite shows, at least from the '90s, all had updated soundtracks. And you're like wondering, wait, what happened to the original music? It's because they didn't, because the company was too cheap to pay for the original soundtrack. And the fact is, if they show it on TV with this updated soundtrack, they can make money off of it. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, that's what he, you know, him and the a couple other guys. So that. But yes, you go. They're still making it. <laughs> <laughs> but my point, my point was for Betty got that long topic. <laughs> Yo, man, I gotta derail that conversation. <laughs> Yo, man, hit us with some facts, man. Um, gotta learn the kids. Uh, how many of y'all like watched the original Yu Gi Oh? I didn't. I really I liked was, it. I was a, I was a little bit too old for that sort of scene. Yeah, I was like you know? what eighteen or something when you go. Yeah. Like, no. Damn. Uh, <laughs> uh, like, it's probably only me and maybe, maybe uh. Carlos, I don't know. No, uh, I would never watched it. No, I wa- I watched it. I you know how it. like they um got rid of the original characters, start doing new characters like yeah, almost, some JoJo like, shit. <laughs> well, yeah, like, the movie they're back, right? This movie brings them back, the original yeah, characters. Yeah, I, I heard about that. I heard about that. I might be giving this a watch pretty soon. I, and I, I don't know if I will, but I think definitely. The- I think for the translated version of it, that they even they even called back the original voice actors for the American one too. Yeah, some Yu-Gi-Oh, and I'm back. I met him. <laughs> I met him. <laughs> he uh, actually did, he did a lot of voices on Ninja Turtles. Well, good for him. And one more thing too is like um, I don't know if I said this before, um, but if I said this before, I told you so. Um, Funimation. Like I, I think I brought it up that Funimation acquired the rights to the girl who left your time, and so since they acquired the rights to it, I assume that they're going to release a Blu-ray copy of it for really cheap. And long and behold, they are. Yeah. Nice. I saw that. That's coming out in June, right? It, um, it's coming out pretty soon. I'm not sure if it's June. I could check my Amazon real quick. Hey man, hey man they, that's that's what they got to do because since they already got like Boy and the Beast, which is made by the same guy, might right. as well pick up all his shit, right? <laughs> right, yeah. That's cool, man. Why right they out, man? Re-release that Digimon movie, man. That movie oh no, <laughs> no, they got to re-release the Digimon movie unedited because that shit is <laughs> fucking. The edited messed up. one is terrible. <laughs> they literally took two movies and um, edited them to both together. Wow. Let's see, it is coming out June 7th. 
Yeah, you were right. Well, you know what you could do? You could just also watch Summer Wars because that's essentially the same thing as Danger Mon the movie. Really? It's, yeah, it's just better made. Yeah, Summer Wars and some the Digimon movies is it almost Summer Wars is almost like a like a, a little bit more of a, a more intense version of that. Similar things, events in that ha- that movie happen to the Digimon films. Okay. And, and the, art, the art style is really, really similar, too. Oh, yeah, because it's the same designers and everything, too. Yeah. All right, Lorraine, you got anything else, man? Yeah, um, no, that's it for me. All right, uh, Chris, what you got? Uh, Dark Souls, does that count? Yeah, <laughs> that's from Japan. <laughs> that's from Japan, right? Uh, <laughs> no, I did try to catch up. Um, me and Chris were watching the end of Season 1 of Sailor Moon Crystal, and I just realized how much I hate kid characters. I hate them. <laughs> Keep Moosin is terrible, and they should have used this opportunity to just murder her and get her out of the fucking show. But oh, they did shit. it. So, great. Fucking kid character. No, Shibi Moon. Is you, you're not into Shibi Moon or whatever the fuck her name no, was? No, she becomes Black Lady. I'm like, perfect. Just murder her with Wise Men, and it's over. It's great. It's perfect. You wrap that up. No, nope, no kid characters. But no, they didn't go that route. Hey man, keep your kids away from Chris. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's the thing. There are cool yeah, kid, kid characters. Fuck kid characters. There are cool kid yeah. characters, and then there's Shibi Moon, who's annoying. Oh yeah, she's awful. She's the worst. I'm and sure then... they got the worst voice actor ever. Like me, me. <laughs> oh man. Um, so yeah, obviously Dark Souls has been taking up all your time. So no anime. Other stuff. Yeah, I also um, rewatched some of Pat Labor this week. And we'll talk about that soon. Yes. Um, Manny, what you got? I was watching. You know, I've said it before. I was watching Ajin or Ajin. I watched that. Um, let's see what else I, I watched. I, I put on something else just for the hell of it. I. I you ever heard of the series um, Zammed? Um, yeah, Lost yeah, Memories. Yeah. Didn't Sony have something to do with that? Yes, that was the Sony exclusive anime. Mm, it's I, a, I, watched, I, watched, I watched it before. I, it's not the greatest of series, but it's actually the design in that and on the show is actually really cool. It's um, it's also bones. So all the animation, all the fighting animation is really awesome. Nice. So, yeah, that's that's pretty much what I did. I just remember the guy reminded me kind of like Guyver. Like he yeah. morphed into this, um, I don't know, techno-cyber organic thing. Yeah, like this. he almost looked like one of the angels a little bit too from... Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> from the, yeah. I that's, remember that. I watched yeah. the beginning of that show, but I remember, yeah, Sony was releasing it. I'm like, all right, check this out. But Yeah, I, that was the Sony exclusive one. I think, you know, it's funny. I think I talked about that on the old old anime <laughs> years the ago. One, yeah. Yeah. But it's a very pretty show. I mean, you know, they they you know Bones always puts out a really nice does some really really nice work when it comes to animated stuff. So it was good to see that one again. Again, not the greatest of shows, but you know, good good the uh, good good watch. Nice. Um, as far as I'm concerned, uh, been watching the Toonami stuff. Uh, only new one of those is uh. Riku's favorite, Hunter x Hunter. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, you started that? Yeah, I started yeah, that. Well, the dumps yeah, yeah, not, not, not just Riku's favorite, man. That, that shit is... Yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah, I'm, I'm yeah, not, yeah, it's a favorite on Throwdown, obviously. You know, uh... You, so, yeah. Trust me, when you come back, you're gonna be like, man... Fuck. You're gonna be crying. <laughs> you're gonna be crying. <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna be reevaluating shit. You, trust me. It's, you're gonna be looking back at the old, old anime video. It's gonna be a totally different experience for you. You're gonna be and crying. And then you're gonna be looking at other anime and you're gonna be like, why are other anime not as good as this? <laughs> really? Damn. Oh, wow. Yeah, because, you know, if this is like typical anime, it's like they, 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 they give you that setup, right? It's like, okay, here's a kid. He wants to become a fucking hunter, right? That's mm-hmm. the premise. I'm pretty sure around episode 30 or 40, it's going to change to something completely fucking different. Like, mm-hmm. I'm already expecting that. You know, it's like the original thing we set up for is not it anymore. Blaze did that shit. Soul Eater did that shit. I'm expecting this to do it too, you know? Because remember in yeah. Soul Eater, it was like, like the, the whole premise was like, okay, you got to collect a hundred souls to become whatever, you know? They dropped that shit like 20 episodes in, you know? It's not but that... You, um, but you also got to understand that also with that show, 
at some point it's it kind yeah, of went so away which, from the comics. So and um and Bleach, remember Bleach started off as a, essentially samurai Ghostbusters. You know, it's like hey, there's some ghosts around here. You got to go, you know, stop. That's them and that's about when I saw you know like I after it got it started it, that it went for on like that for like a season until like the end of the first one they got into Japan world. And I yeah. was like, oh, I'm done. Uh, if this is gonna be like, hey, we have to catch the the monster of the week, I'm like done. <laughs> well, yeah, but um, yeah. I mean, again, I only seen two episodes. You know, I like the character so far. You, you know, I'm not really big into kids and like that, but I like the main kid in this. Gone, I believe his name is. Yeah, He's no. cool. I, I like the the way he was presented. You know how he kind of is fearless. You know, like a typical you know shonen type character and stuff. He doesn't seem to be as hungry as a typical shonen character, though. You know, but he, he's cool. I like the the dude with the glasses. He was pretty fun. Yeah, and I like the the, yeah. the the tests they were doing to you know get them to you know the main part of the the test or what. You know, it's like they were doing preliminary tests before they get to the main test. So I enjoyed all that. You know, there was some shit going on with the boat, which was pretty cool. Big ass waves. Fun show. You know. I'll, I'll tell you this yeah. much, Tony. Yeah. Like, if Hunter x Hunter, um, the anime completed, like it was actually still going on, it it, it might rival One Piece for me. Oh shit! Like, it, it's that good. Crazy. Yeah, because that's the thing. One Piece and the manga for One Piece and Hunter x Hunter, they actually started like months or so, months apart from each other. They're like Those really, are... they're like really close as far as like age. Nice, yeah, obviously. Right? Yeah, ninety-seven. I can't remember which one is like older. I'm, you can look it up, but I know they're like they're like six months away from each other as far as when they first started. And obviously, the only difference is one of them, one of those mangaka stay consistent, <laughs> and one of them, you know, he okay. went on a couple of hiatuses and whatnot. But yeah, <laughs> I, I didn't I, finish Yu Yu Hakusho. <laughs> yeah, they but, made uh, Amy made a fucking game of that. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, like for 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 Hunter X Hunter Tony like. Yeah, for Madhouse, the, man, the job they did on this anime, like, it's amazing. Yeah. It's the best. It's the best animated shonen ever. That's crazy. Like, long, long running shonen. I, I do need to bring up the elephant in the room with this show. Why are you gonna call it Hunter Hunter and you clearly spell it as Hunter X Hunter? And you know well, the thing like, is, you, um, you know, the thing is like, okay, well, you could so basically they could be like. Hunter P Hunter. Don't pronounce the P though. It's just Hunter Hunter. It's like what? <laughs> That's the thing. Sense. When it comes to um, uh, obviously a Japanese show, and when they uh, uh, they translated it, um, in Japan they sometimes use the word X as um, cross. As either, they use it as for multiple things. They use it for cross. They use it for comma. They use it for space. It's kind of like um, Tekken Cross Street Fighter. Kind of yeah. like that. You know, they kind of use the they they use the X as just like a a space, so that's why they don't pronounce it because it's kind of like considered like kind of like a comma or a space. Yeah, but it's kind of like the, the the space in Spider Man. Well, no, that's not, a, that's not a space; it's a hyphen. Yeah, that's like the hyphen in Spider Man. But it's not really yeah. a hyphen. But it, yeah, that's not all. That's not even really. <laughs> I mean, they're using it like a hyphen. You know what I mean? I'm just saying, man. Trying to get technical. Listen, listen, it's Japanese. Don't question it. <laughs> you know I mean? it's, just, it's basically a Japanese guy trying to. Um, when it comes to Spider Man the hyphen, I got a sore spot because the motherfuckers be calling it Spider Speederman. It's like, who the fuck is Speederman? Is you that know? Jewish? Put the, put the hype it, hyphen in there. <laughs> you know? It's a Jewish kid from New York. Yeah. Hey, I'm Speederman. <laughs> yeah, it's just. Falafel. Yeah, it's just a space. So just call right. it Hunter Hunter like everyone and just like, yeah. Just, yeah, no, I'm gonna be wrong. She's, but I'm like, yo, man, it's an yeah. X. <laughs> you know it yeah, I don't know. Everyone started like Hunter X Hunter. You're like, yeah, you just started this, didn't you? Like, what, what did I do wrong? <laughs> I did I wrong? I, lo I love Hunter X Hunter. <laughs> I, I always, I, I've always called it Hunter X Hunter. Yeah. You still call it that shit, man. Yeah, it's like, Hunter, Hunter. Hunter. I don't know. It just, oh, go ahead. Hunter, Hunter Cross Hunter, 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 they come back to us. Okay, I, guess, yeah, I might do that. For me, I might, hey, I just, remember, I might be that motherfucker. I'd be like, hey, I kind of like the original one more. <laughs> you know, <laughs> the original one looks a lot more like Yu Hakusho art style. And yeah, you know, me, I prefer, yeah. I prefer old anime art style over new, uh, more modern. Or so I mean, well, like that more. You know, Tony, remember a long time ago, uh, this couple of months ago, we we're talking about this. Uh, I forgot this anime Riku showed us that. Said that like the best uh, animation, and it was like all CG with a car and stuff. Yeah, that bullshit. Yeah. 
Remember the. <laughs> remember the. Well, oh, I don't remember which one it was, but remember the the one that I sent you. Yeah. With the fight, that's that's Hunter X Hunter. Oh shit! Yeah, that shit was crazy, son. Yeah, what I mean. Fight? Well, what? you know me, man. I'm I'm gonna stick it out through the long haul, so I'm I'm definitely looking forward to seeing what y'all is talking about. You know. Yeah, I think I saw Treasy on Twitter too. He was loving it because you know he nice. watches too many also. Yeah, that's so you know I'm, I'll be on that for real. That's um, what you up and then say anything about Hunter Hunter. Crazy? Yeah. Yeah, you just I, I told him I was like, dude, Hunter Hunter's coming out tonight. You, your ass better be watching that shit. And, like, All right, I'll <laughs> and then I see him on Twitter I'm like, oh yo, Hunter Hunter. I'm like, there you go, there you go. Y'all haven't even got to the good part yet. I'm yeah, like, we just have the ass beginning right now, man. Mm-hmm. You know? Honestly, you're you're in in my opinion, you guys are at like the worst part right now. Yeah, it's exactly. Y'all have the boring shit. Y'all have yeah, to like. <laughs> Want to fall asleep? Shit, after what I saw, like what they wanted to do. So, hey, I mean, if it gets better, that's great because I, I'm enjoying what I'm watching now. You know, I think it's yeah. pretty cool. You know, um, what else? You know, the other tsunami shit, fucking Dragon Ball. Oh, um, Dimension W. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm like halfway through that. I believe there's like 24 episodes, right? No, it's 12. Oh yeah, I watched two episodes of that. Oh, whoa, 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 it's only 12. So I'm like one episode, literally one episode away. What the fuck? Mm-hmm. No, no, Rico, no, 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 no. I'm stop, I'm gonna stop the show right now. You're telling me there's only one episode <laughs> left. If Dimension W was twelve episodes, bro. No, see, no, no, no. I, I, I don't believe you right now because I'm, I'm, I'm like, okay, <laughs> they need, they need to set up so much more shit. How are you gonna end it in one episode? Yeah, well, remember what I told you when I was like, uh, man, Dimension W, man, yeah, see about son, that. I'm on episode eleven, son. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Get the fuck. See, I'm expecting like, yo, I'm half at the halfway point, man. She's about to no, you, crazy you know, now. you right at the end. You ain't at the halfway point. You right at the end. Yeah, <laughs> that's exactly that, that's exactly the same feel that, to, that we had with that last show with Asian Ajin. Man. Yeah. Like, <laughs> now you know our pain, Tony. But like, yeah, um, yeah man. Because I'm getting ready. I'm like, yo, this is where the show is gonna take a big turn now. Now shit's about to really get crazy. But is it is this where it's gonna? Um, are they gonna get a second season? I don't know. Don't know. You fucking better no. now that you're telling me this I shit. I know Dimension W. I know their um, season finale was better than Ashen's. I'll give them that. So at least oh, you're not going to be left with like you know that much of a blue balls. You're going to yeah. be left with blue balls, but it's not going to be as blue as ours. Shit. <laughs> 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 yeah, oh, man. And then um, I, man, I don't know how I feel about this Thriller Bark shit, man. In One Piece. Exactly. Uh, exactly. Mm-hmm. I'm a stuck on like, there's some stuff in it I find funny. Like, Luffy's just like, I want that on this ship. That's so cool. Like, that's uh, funny. And then the last episode I was watching, I was like, yo, these guys are getting paid a lot to scream. Like, all the Nami and fucking Chopper are doing just screaming <laughs> at the same time. It's like, this feels like, 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 this feels like, I call it canon fil- filler. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that's what I was about to say. I feel yeah. like it's a filler. I feel like it's a filler right now. Well, yeah, you're, you're, Thriller Bark only got, in my opinion, Thriller Bark only got good around the end. Yeah, so I agree with I, you guys. Went into that beginning. Well, uh, yeah, let like, me, uh, yeah. Go ahead. Let me ask your personal opinion. When the fuck does One Piece finally get good? What? what? That's an interesting question. I mean, I mean, that's your that's your opinion on when you think it got good because a lot of people you get a I'm lot of different answers. Okay. Okay. My opinion, in my opinion, it got good in its lobby, and it got amazing at uh, Marine Ford. Yeah, well, I was gonna like my opinion. It got good at Arlong Park, uh, and it got amazing in Ennis Lobby. Arlong Park, that's when it started to get my interest. It got good at Ennis Lobby, and then it got you know amazing at uh, Marine Ford. Marine and Marine Ford is what right after through the park. Yeah, or I no, think no, it's it's Thriller Bark, then the Impel Down. Yeah, the, Impel Down, the Thriller Bark, and then you no, have um. No? Well, no, no, it's it's the Arpelago, whatever that sh- shit's Arca- called. Arya yeah, Archipelago, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Samodi or whatever that's. Samodi, yeah, oh, yeah, Samodi. Oh, that's a good, that's a good one too, though. Some okay, that's pretty good. Event. How far is the time skip from Thriller Bark? The time skip from Thriller Bark. Yeah, how far is it from it? Oh, oh, um, so it's Thriller Bark, then it's one more, then like three more arcs, and then the time skip. Oh yeah, oh that's but, amazing. 
But everything after Thriller Bark is really, really good. I mean, Thriller Bark's not that bad, in my opinion. Especially in my the opinion, end. I would say Thriller Bark is. I would say Thriller Bark is the uh, least interesting. I can agree. Yeah, with from, that. from from that group, yeah, I would I would agree. But yeah, it's not um, as bad as like Fishman Island or anything like that. Yeah, I mean, oh, my, like, I mean, don't get me wrong. I actually liked One Piece from the very first episode. I'm like, oh, this is a very unique kind of anime. But to me, that when I'm like, oh, this is pretty interesting. Um, damn, I think you said it, Carlin. Arlong Park, right? The one with, with the Fishmen, right? Where you first introduced yeah. to them. That's when I'm like, okay, this is pretty serious. And then when it really hit me was, um, I forget the name of the arc. It was the one where they were in the fucking desert. I'm like, oh, okay, this oh, is awesome. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, I'm like, this is some good shit. This is awesome, you know? Yeah, like I said, Lorraine, you're going to get a lot of different answers from uh, everyone as far as when it gets good. <laughs> That's an opinionated thing. I think we, <laughs> where it, like, it has the potential to be good is when Luffy revealed his second gear against mm. the... Um, That's in his lobby. That's in his lobby, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I thought it had, like, it showed its potential there. And after that... Oh, wow, mm-hmm. and even the whole setup for the grand line, you know, I, I like the whole mystery. Like, what is this place? You know, what's in there? It's like you hear all these stories and shit. And even when they initially got there, it was like, yo, the compasses were all fucked up. You know, I thought that was really cool. And now it's as, as it's going on, it feels like the mystery of the grand line isn't there. Like all those weird phenomena, all those anomalies aren't happening as much as they used to. You know, so I, I kind of wish they they brought up a little bit more of that aspect, but. You know, it is what it is, but I, uh, you know, it, yeah, I, I guess that, that's my answer. It's like when it got to the the Alabasta thing, I'm like, okay, this, this show is pretty legit, man. Maybe I'm seeing it from a different perspective because I know how amazing it is because my little brother is always in my ear and I like mm-hmm. um, so That's why you started it like it was last year? What's up? That's why you started it last year? No, I I, I've been on this for years. I'm sorry. Yeah. Like, I, well, I mean, I remember. I mean, when you, I mean, when you were marathoning it last year, because I remember um, it was like last summer, when you were, you were like, oh, I'm not gonna like 60 chapters of One Piece, Riku, and I was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, um, the reason why I started reading it was because of my brother, and mm-hmm. like every once in a while, I stop reading it, then my brother gets back in my ear talking mm-hmm. to me about it, like, oh, you wouldn't believe what happened, or like something on the end that blows up, like. When Luffy reaches, you know, another peak level, and yeah. this is old for me again, I'm like, okay, I gotta read it again, you know. But like, it sends a long trudge up the hill. They're just like, ugh, ugh. <laughs> then I get, you know, I get on to a bump and trip. And I'm like, ugh, it takes me a long time to get back up because <laughs> again, Thriller Bark is boring as fuck for me. It's just yeah, like it's rough, man. It's rough. Why, why would I read One Piece when I have like all this Tokyo Ghoul goodness in front of me? You know? See, I understand it when it, when you say that, and that's why I, when it came to One Piece, I, I'm I'm glad to freaking by the time I watched One Piece, Locked Thriller Bark on. was, well, no, Thriller Bark was English dub. Mm-hmm. So, I, in my opinion, watching something in English dub is the easiest, far far the easiest way to consume <laughs> something. Well, because you don't have to look at the screen. Exactly. When something interesting does happen, then you can look at the screen. But as far as all the mm-hmm. dialogue and the jokes, you could be on your computer on Facebook. You could just be listening. And if you actually, and you know, you could you could be doing two things at once, and that's 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 might that might be what you might have to do, Lorraine. You might have to just English dub it just to get through there, and then like. I mean, thr- Thriller Bark's not even that long though, and the end is. Pretty I mean, good. The, be- the beginning to the middle, if you're not enjoying it, it feels like a while, bro. Like the whole Zoro and um, Perona stuff, and then the Usopp and Perona stuff, and then. All that a build up to ores him, himself, all of that little ores. It, it can't do. Yeah, it can't do a. Like, it can't do a Put it in perspective for you. This, I'm like 458 chapters in, and like I still don't feel like it's good yet. You know, it's just, wow. Like over and over and over again, I have to force myself to read something. It's just like. I mean, that's it, man. That's it. Like I said, that's why I only started reading it till. I only started reading One Piece at at the Marine Ford. Everything I everything I experienced in One Piece was English dubbed. So, you know how they say if a, if an anime yeah. does it justice, then the, the anime should be you know. And even though anime doesn't do it justice as far as One Piece, uh, it's still entertaining and it's good. It's a good binge watch. I'm not fucking with the fillers though. If oh yeah, they, definitely not. No, no one I'll ever did to. I'll <laughs> tell you this much: if I mean, if you want to stick with it, if the next 
two arcs, or like if you don't enjoy Impel Down or Marineford, then it's t it's definitely not your thing. I wouldn't I wouldn't even like put Impel Down on on a pedestal like that because I remember there was a part during Impel Down, you know, when you know Luffy had to recover uh, from not that that shit. I was right. like, oh my god, this is dragging the fuck on. So I didn't I wouldn't even co-sign Impel Down when it came to that. I mean, the villain was cool, but I would co-sign Marine Ford. If you're not yeah. if you're not hooked by Marine Ford, then I would say. I don't know, man. I can't say anything. I would say Marine Four is that is that one because that that's legit. Oh, did legit say that that was that is the halfway point of One Piece was the Marine Four. So he he wanted to make it like that mid season finale type of feel. That's what that arc was supposed to be for all of One Piece was that mid season finale climactic thing. And it's the like like I said, that's the last arc that happened after. <laughs> The time skip, so you know some big shit happened for them to go on a time skip after that. So that's the arc right there. That that should do it. If it doesn't, then yeah, that should say something. I don't know, as soon as like, someone yeah. dies. Yeah, I mean it is what it is. We going we gonna continue. Yeah. Right. All right. Um. So that that's pretty much all. I mean, you guys don't know all the rest of Naruto and shit. I didn't realize how long that fucking um arc was with the uh, the three tailed beast, that turtle. I was like, damn, this shit is dragging off forever. Not. <laughs> is it a filler with with, with, Gur, with Gurin and the, and the little kid? I think that's canon, dude. Yo, I haven't even heard of them. Gara? Yeah. yeah. No, no. It, like basically, it's for Orochimaru. Like he has this little kid who controls the three tailed beast, and uh, the girl Gurin that has the the crystal powers and stuff. Yeah, that's. that's, that's right. Yeah, that's canon. You know. Is it? Oh. Yeah, but I forgot how fucking long that shit dragged. You know. Oh, you also you, you you also gotta understand they're stretching shit out. Yeah, you know? even if it even if it isn't even if there isn't filler, they're making that shit like you know. Yeah, yeah. They exactly. have them standing on screens like mm -hmm. for for a while with their backs facing. Yeah, you know, but they're the waiting. Because the thing is, when I watched the original one, you know, the Japanese one, I think I just watched them all in one like, giant lump. You know, mm -hmm. instead of watching it one a week, like damn, this shit's forever, man. You know, um. So yeah, that's pretty much it. So let, let's get right into it. Uh, anime of the month. Pat labor, or mobile police pat labor to be precise. Now, pat labor is interesting because there were several series and movies. You know, mm -hmm. it, was a, it was a lot. Like, it, it started off, I mean, obviously it started off as a manga. Then it got made into an OVA, which is six episodes. Then there were movies, and then they made a TV series. And the tone was kind of all over the place, you know? It, like, yeah. The like, movie, well, yeah. you, you know that set, that's, mm -hmm. that, I think it was the third movie. You know who directed that shit. Well, the, the, the first two movies were directed by the dude who did Ghost in the Shell, right? He totally changed the fucking tone oh, yeah. of that shit. You know, because Pat Labor was a little bit, you know, it was like a more, like, lighthearted type of show, you know? And the mm. premise was interesting because, obviously, in, by that time, mech shows were everywhere. But this one was like, hey, what if we had mechs that are just for labor, pat labor, you know, patrol labor? Um, but they were like, hey, if we're going to have um, these... Okay, basically, the whole premise is like, okay, we have a society that has mechs that are used for labor, construction, all this other shit, but obviously there's going to be um, crime associated with this, you know, um, mobile crime or whatever, so you need a police force to deal with that, pat labor, patrol labors, you know, and that's the whole setup. I thought it was pretty interesting, but obviously, just like any good mech show, it's not really about the mechs, it's about the characters, you know, and I pretty enjoyed the characters, but again, the, the TV show characters and the movie characters, very, very different. The same characters, but just totally, totally different, but Chris, mm -hmm. you pick this one, so, uh, you know, what, what are your thoughts on pat labor? Yeah, um, when I first saw Pat Labor, was like back. I think back in college, I got introduced to it. So that was back in the mid '90s, and I had seen the TV series first, right? And it's very lighthearted. It's very funny, very humorous. And then I saw the first movie, and I'm like, man, this shit is joyless, right? It was kind of boring. They uh, first of all, they they changed the style, like the TV. The, the TV series and then the movies are kind of in a different style. And I know it's uh, um, Oshi directed Pat Labor the movie, which explains a lot. Why yeah, it goes in the shell, you know? Yeah. Well, it's like the, the tone is very serious. I mean, the movie starts with a suicide, and then there's like terrorists and all this shit. So, and Labor's going haywire and killing people. So I was like, man, this is dark. So then I went back later. And I remember I used to go over to MIT and watch anime because they have a big anime library over there. They probably still do. They had a big anime club, and I joined it. Um, and I watched the uh, original 
Pat Labor series, the seven episodes. And then I kind of understood because the tone of that one, while the characters still had a lot of humor, it was a little more serious. So that explained the movies. But the but when I jumped from the TV series to the movies, I'm like, man, what these are not alike at all. And I kind of didn't enjoy the movies at all. But I kind of appreciate them more now than I did back then. Yeah, with me it was different because I remember um, the Sci-Fi Channel used to watch, used to show the first two movies all the time, right? So yes, that was my did. introduction to Pat Labor. So to me, Pat Labor was always a very serious type of thing. But again, I thought the premise was pretty cool. So then, um, you know, I, I, who was it? It was Sentai. They decided, hey, we're gonna release all of this shit, you know. So they released the OVA and then they released the TV series. I saw the OVA. I'm like, oh, this is very different than what I'm used to, you know. Like this is really lighthearted, you know. But I enjoyed it, and then I saw the TV series, and then I found out that the manga is more like the TV series. I'm like, okay, so Oshi just did that shit again. Because for you guys who don't know, Ghost in the Shell was actually a lighthearted manga, too. When he got his hands on it, he changed it completely, you know? My man was like, nope, you're dark now. You know, so he did the same shit with uh, Patu Labor, you know, but I enjoyed it. Um, we can talk about that third movie later, because that was a very interesting movie. Um, the third one was... Um, but Riku, since you're the the resident mech man around here, what do you think of Pat Labor? Okay, before I hop into it, um, I want to ask you, both of you, if you had to prefer which one out of the three versions that you said, which one would... Oh, if I had to make a pick shit. See, that's where it gets tricky because, um, Let me you know, on. Like, I, damn, like, yeah, I'm going to get Chris goes. I already know his answer. Oh, I uh, I started with the TV series and I enjoyed it a lot. Um, I'd say I'd say TV, the original OVAs, and then the movies are last for me because I didn't really like the second movie. Okay, what about you, Tony? All right, um, shit, that's hard, dude. Because I really love those movies. Like I I don't disagree with anything Chris said about how they're kind of slow and boring, but then but I like that whole political intrigue thing. So it's like. Objectively speaking, I'm going to say the movies are better because they're just more intricately created. But as far as enjoyment goes, I'm probably going to go with the with the 40 whatever episode series. The, the, the TV series. Yeah, because they just gave you more of an overview of the world of pat labor. You know, the different types of um, you know, labors and stuff. The the just the whole general world of it. It gave you more of a broader appeal. But man, I really like those fucking movies. <laughs> you know, because it, especially like when they actually get into action, fucking legit. The you know, animation yeah. in those the, the the thing about those movies is the animation is super good in those. It is it is ridiculous, man. But yeah, uh, I guess I'll pick the the TV series. Well, there you go, Rico. That's my answer. Oh okay. All right. So when it kind when it came to me, when I started watching it, the um like the first about five episodes, I was I was enjoying the um the world building and you know you know the introduction to everything. But and and Chris did warn me that you know this. As far as the um, TV series is concerned, it is the episodic one. Did warn me about that, and it did definitely take a toll on me as far as the episodic um, thing that the TV series brought to the table. And my enjoyment, my enjoyment, honestly, it plummeted to like ridiculous. I could, I was, I was honestly, I was struggling for, to get through some of the episodes. It just I felt the uh, some of the episodic episodes in the TV series was just I don't know I mean because you know they like I said like you guys said it was a lighthearted thing and it, it jo- comedy is definitely one of the genres that they try to uh, they tried to do and comedy is subjective you either liked it or you didn't and I personally none of the jokes were clicking with me so I don't know I just when it came to the episodic episodes, wasn't clicking with me. And as far as like the canon con- continuation stuff, like I think it was around episode thirty something that when the uh, the black Pat Labor um, yeah. mech came in, that stuff was that stuff was interesting, but it only lasted about two and a half episodes, and then it was gone. I was, I was like, damn it, because I had really good mech design and all this stuff. If, if there's anything I'll give it to give this um, one thing I did like is the the art style and the mech designs. That's probably the best thing I liked about the show. Yeah, because um, the mech designs, you, you could tell they try to make them like, you know, obviously it's all fake, but they try to make them look a little bit more realistic. Like if mechs were real, this is what they would look like. Obviously the black one was like, okay, this is straight up, you know, fucking Gundam type. You know, it uh, looked like Master Gundam. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that was, but, 
But it was cool. It was cool. Uh, but yeah, like I said, that was probably my favorite thing about Pat Labor was the mech designs. But as far as um, the characters, um, not not really. So well, the main character, uh, what's her name? Izumi. The yeah, Izumi. Girl, yeah. Noah Izumi. Noah Izumi. She was she was um, interesting. Um, but I think I think what what happened with me was when I came to Pat Labor, I was I what I was expecting from it was um, some sort of type uh, some sort of antagonist that was going to push the um, the protagonist and the characters around the protagonist further and you know better at what they did and I don't we never never really got uh, an ongoing antagonist like HR Asenbel or just any type of like a rival um, rivaling force you know yeah. to oppose them. No, I know what you mean. They they kind of dealt dealt with different things throughout the show. I thought in the in the OVA, um, go to's rival. Um, I forgot the guy's name. The one in that two parter. Yeah. Uh, with the guy with the nuke, he could have been great if they adopted him as like an ongoing villain. And they kind of left it like that at the end of the episode. I'm like, oh, he could have been. Why didn't they do anything with him? He's brilliant. Yeah. Oh, by the yeah. way, I need to I need to sidetrack a little bit because Riga, I gotta ask you a question. How many anime have you felt let down by because you went in expecting something and you didn't get what you were expecting? Because I you named two already, and I remember the same thing happened with Agur and Lagan. Like you went in expecting one thing, you got something else, and you were like disappointed by it. Does that happen um, regularly? Um, no, it actually doesn't happen regularly. It doesn't happen regularly. Because sometimes when I when I expect something and they sometimes you know give me something that's even better than what I expected and then that that makes me even more happy. But I mean, I don't know. I mean, I guess I should stop coming into you yeah know, expecting stuff. But I, you know, I I can try, but I I can't promise that I can because that's just like a that's just the thing that my brain does. I'm like, okay, I want to see this, I want to see that, and then you don't get it, and you're like, especially. Especially when you sometimes if you do go into a series just like open minded and not expecting anything, and then you technically didn't get anything. I don't know. I mean, that's happened sometimes too, where I went into series and I'm I don't I didn't expect anything, no bar it had to set, and then it's that you know the bar that it brought was low to begin with, and I'm just like, oh, you know, it is what it is. Yeah, I just find that interesting because I'm like, you know, I'm like, it, it would be better. To just go in like, okay, show me what you got, and and judge the anime no, for that, yeah. That is true, but there's the, the thing is when you guys um recommended um Pat Labor, you know, you recommended it as a mech, um anime, and yeah. you know, I was talking to um a friend of ours whose Pat Labor I think is his favorite mech anime of all time. Like he gave it a ten out of ten and everything. Oh wow! I was asking him. I was like, when I was talking to him about Pat Labor, I was like, Pat Labor. Um, I personally don't feel Pat Labor's main, and you guys said it yourself. Its main focus isn't the mechs, and as far as like the, you know, this is def. I would consider it a subgenre on, um, Mobile Police Pat Labor, and and the two words, you know, the two first words in the title is Mobile Police. I I feel this is more of a police anime. Oh yeah, for sure. It's yeah. definitely a more That's of a, a police anime. The, 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 pat, the pat labor in that show is more of a. It's more like a car. Yeah, it's kind you of. Know, like it's down. like it's just it's just like a it's a piece of equipment. It's not really the the focus of the show. Yeah, and yeah. and that's a, and you can say the same thing for Code Geass. But at the same, but at the same time, it is the focus of the show because that it's literally. What do you watch? You watching the show about the patrol labor? You know, the, it, the it is, unit, but you know, it is. But I'm just like. I I I didn't feel well, I I I would put it in the same category as far as Code Geass they ex, they exist there and they as far as like from a uh pushing the con, uh put pushing the the conflict and the story from a any sort of conflict standpoint further they're definitely gonna have to use those um use that just yeah. like Code Geass but I didn't feel you know when I, when I like I said, you guys recommended it because you felt it was a uh, a good mech. In my opinion, I didn't feel it was a good mech anime. I felt it was yeah. a good police anime. Yeah, no, I I, I, see, I I don't disagree with you, but to me, I I feel it is a good mech show because it, it takes kind of the basic mech formula and twists it on its head. You know, 
it says maybe, it's maybe a, for me it twisted on his head so far too much right yeah. Yeah. yeah I was just like because I because then there was some episodes where it's just like no mix whatsoever it was just this episode is about Noah and she's gonna go and save this kitty the end I'm like okay <laughs> there was a lot of episodes like that probably like. Fifty-five percent of that. Yeah, there, there were a lot of that. like. Yeah, because it's really about the characters. Yeah, you know? and then, you know, it's, yeah, and, I, and it's funny. Like I said, as far as a mech show, that's not that's not that's yeah. what I said. When you go into a certain series, you're like, oh yeah, this is a mech show. I know you're gonna like it. Yeah, so, yeah you know, I mean, they're expecting something already. They did the motley crew of characters, like you have Noah, who's wants to be a pilot so bad, and then you have. Gun crazy Ota, and then the yeah, quiet giant. Ota, yeah. yeah, oh, he's nuts. Interesting. He wants to shoot everybody, you know. Yeah, it's like, give me a gun. Funny. Um, but yeah, Rico, I know what you, I know what you're saying, but you know, with me, like, because I went in with Pat. Then again, I saw Pally so many years ago, but it was like, hey, it's a mech show. I'm gonna watch it. It's like, oh, it was, it's not a mech show. It's about police. Okay, that's cool. Give me that. Yeah. You know, it was like I said, it was a good police. It was a good police show. Yeah. But my problem is, I'm not too fond of police shows to begin with. So oh. as a police show, it was good, but I'm not really a fan of that. I'm so. still going to recommend you watch Tank Police one day, though. It's only six uh-huh. episodes. Tank Police. <laughs> Tank Police is the shit, man. Tank Police, though, Tank Police will frustrate the fuck out of you because it, do, it just it ends. doesn't end. Yeah, it just like, doesn't it end. Yeah. I yeah, could, I could, I couldn't, I couldn't suggest that. Show. I was going to suggest that show, but I can't, can't suggest that show for the plain reason that it doesn't have an ending. Mm. I was against no closure. Well, it yeah, actually yeah. wasn't yeah. going anywhere either. Does no, it, it doesn't. It, it, it just wasn't. looked really nice, you know. Like, the yeah, it, and stuff. yeah, it's nice. It and it has an interesting story. It's like out there, but it doesn't go anywhere. It really, yeah. I can't recommend it either. It doesn't end, and it wasn't going anywhere to begin with. But yeah, that's 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 as far as my like opinion on mobile police pat labor. It was yeah, it's a good police, a, a good police anime. But as far as mech, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I, me personally, if I, if I knew someone was looking for a mech series, I wouldn't, um, I wouldn't recommend this one. I wouldn't, I couldn't, I don't know, because it just like it feels like, I would be, it would, I, I felt it was kind of like a false advertisement, honestly, <laughs> as far as like interesting. See, to me, I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend it to anybody that's like a first time mech person. I would recommend mm-hmm. it's like a, a deep veteran that wants something completely different, but still technically within the genre. You know, that's what, like, hey, you know, you you checked all this out. Check out Pat Labor too. Is the, the, I think for me, what I what really, and and and, and uh, that goes in the same category, same thing with a uh, Gurren Lagann, which I was when uh when I got into Gurren Lagann, I. I felt kind of iffy about it, but I still think it's very good. But I, the reason I didn't think it was amazing is because of the same reason for a pat labor. So I think when I go into a, a mech series, one of the things that really I really like in mech series is how good the piloting skills of the protagonist and the development on that. If that's if that's in there, then you can sell me. And as far as mobile police pat labor, they didn't. They 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 went into a few things as far as the piloting skills of the people behind the mobile police pat labor, but it definitely wasn't it definitely wasn't focused on, and that's not a bad thing as far as the series, but as far as what I look for in a in a mech series, it you know it couldn't bring that, and, and the same thing goes for Gurren Lagann. When when I think of characters like Simone or any of the other people in Gurren Lagann, they're not they're it wasn't really about their piloting skills. It was, it was about Believe in me. That believes in you. Yes. And make us gonna transform, and we throw in galaxy, son. And I'm just like, <laughs> damn it, that's badass, but that's not what I want. <laughs> you know, that's not yeah. what I wanted. But yeah, I just um, for for poli- mobile police pilot, I was just like, Izumi, she she was a she was a decent she was a decent pilot, and I actually thought Shinoa, I Shinoa Hara, I, yeah, I thought he was gonna do something as far as like getting behind a um. Pat Lair, he didn't really do anything. So, so he's just he was he was the coordinator type of guy. That was definitely different to see, you know, the the characters because usually there's the the female who's the coordinator and the guy that's in the pilot. So yeah, basically. it was interesting to see the the opposite way around. And then they had their little um their little um scuffle relationship thing that had that was that was interesting for a little relationship thing. But it you know that only lasted about two and a half episodes, and then we continued with other stuff. You know who I wanted to see more flesh out that the it was like she was an American woman, but she was also Japanese. Like she was really, really good. At, oh, the at NYPD. Pilot. 
Um, yeah, the end, yeah, she was a face off. Yeah, she, yeah. Did, she, she did. Yeah, she did come out of nowhere. What's like, hilarious is she's supposed to be half Japanese, right? American NYPD. She looks more Japanese than the <laughs> rest of them. Yes, it's true. You know. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna talk, I'm gonna quickly talk about the third movie. I don't know if you got around to seeing that one. That one was interesting because it the tone of it was totally di- like okay, it wasn't like it was still dark and stuff, but it was different because the, the main antagonist was not a mech; it was a monster, you know. Mm-hmm. And that movie yeah. was actually an adaptation of an episode from this the main series where they fought a oh, monster. I remember that one. Well, yeah, wait, yeah it, was, it was a uh, weird adaptation of that one. Yeah, it was a weird adaptation of that, you know. Yeah, I like, think I know like, what episode you're talking about. Yeah. yeah, so they made a like they made an entire movie out of that, and it wasn't even like the main pat labor patrol, you know, force was not even involved. It was like it involved two like random cops, like detectives and stuff. They didn't even oh, use yeah. robots. Dude, there was this one episode of Mo Police Pat Labor. Man, it pissed me off because, um, it was basically the ep- it was an episode where they got upgrades and all of their um designs on their mobile police they they looked more badass they got like extra like thrusters and they they were like um launching out of like the water and whatnot I was like oh yeah. is this like the because you know as far as um you know just Gundam around the half a point of Gundam that's when they get their upgrades and that's when shit just gets even more better and I thought that's what was happening here and then at the end of the episode it was just one of the guys one of the like scientists who um helped Design and create the uh, um, pat labors. He was just having a dream, and I was like, "Yeah, I remember that." Yeah. <laughs> ah, no, <laughs> well, back and you were just. Yeah. On, on the <laughs> counterpoint to that, like, I that's one of the reasons I tried to watch this um, series called Captain Earth. Uh-huh. Oh, oh, yeah, I know about Captain. I thought I was yeah. actually considering watching that at one point. Yeah, but he he falls into that re- rinse and repeat thing where he. It's like this special kid, and only he can pilot this super mech and make it transform, and it merges with all these other um, pieces mm-hmm. when when he transforms. And it was cool. Like, the first couple of episodes were neat, but he just kept doing the same thing. Like, oh, these aliens are attacking, and then he would launch out, and you should see this complicated mm-hmm. Voltron-type shit, and then he's yeah. ready to go. He's overpowered, and I was like, Pat Labor didn't do any of that. There was, no, uh, there was nothing special about Izumi. I mean, Oto was the other pilot, and he seemed almost as competent as she was, except he was crazy. Um, I mean, his piloting, his piloting skills were definitely below hers. Yeah, he, I mean, he had a lot of passion, though. Yeah, he, he was. Had. Yeah, you know, I, like he said, he was competent, but yeah, she was. She was better than him, and then you know, he was just willing to yeah, shoot. Yeah, there wasn't. There, there's nothing. There's nothing overly special where it doesn't. Really, they don't follow that silly cliche. It's like you're the only one who can pilot this thing, and you're <laughs> the greatest pilot, better than everyone. Right. How like, many shows have you seen that way where it's just like, yeah, oh that's, my that's God. true. But it's, for me, it's not about oh, yeah, you're gonna have that. It's it's more about the ex- the execution behind it. Because I know there was a um, Mobile Suit Gundam Stardust Memory. He's the the main protagonist in that. He is an ass of a pilot. He's he's fucking terrible. And that story, um, it follows him and his struggles of just being a horrible pilot in such a good such a good Gundam. And they, yeah, I didn't I didn't go into there looking looking for something like that. They have but, alpha brain waves. <laughs> I didn't have that. In, they didn't even have that in that one. What is that? No, that quantum one. brainwaves. That was what it was. Quantum that was a unicorn. Yeah. I know what you mean. Yeah. <laughs> That's another thing. Yeah, the dude in the unicorn. He's definitely fall. He follows that cliche. Is you, you're the only one that can pilot this. You're thing. the greatest pilot ever. Yeah. Even though you're just some kid, we just found somewhere. Well, I, I think the way they did it for unicorn was uh, it was it was it was it was, it was actually good because they they um, like you said, they it directly connected to his um. His thoughts, so he mm-hmm. didn't have to actually have piloting skills to be that good. And so that's how they bounced it off. But all those other pilots, they, they just so happened to be amazing. Yeah. They didn't have no. They make fun of that in the original Pet Labor series, where oh, really? I think um, Ota, there's a hostage situation, and Ota loses his mind, and he sh- puts his gun, like the revolver cannon, into the store. Yeah. And it accidentally goes off. Like it like it looks like he murdered everyone in the store. Like so he's getting reprimanded and um the uh, Captain Goto is like telling them it's like 
you, what do you think? This is some kind of mecha anime? You, you, <laughs> you know, this isn't the story about some retarded kid or a punk who gets lucky, you know? Like, I, I thought that was hilarious. Yeah, I remember I that. Uh, that's pretty yeah. fun. All right, I think we pretty much hit all the, the notes on Pat to Labor, you know? Um, by the way, even though the show's already going on long, should we slightly talk about this Ghost in the Shell shit? You mean the Ghost in the Shell oh, new Scarlett movie? Johansson. Scarlett Johansson? Cause oh, no. I, I, was, I was talking about the, the, new, the, the, the anime that got released on, on DVD, on Blu-ray recently, which is called yeah. Ghost in the Shell, new, uh, the new movie. Yeah, like, what is that? But we'll, we'll save that for the end of the show. But uh, let, let's get to um, the anime we're anticipating. Uh, let's see. Let's do it backwards this time. Carlos, what are you anticipating? Um, other than the anime of the month, just pretty much staying with the the weekly anime that's coming out. I have nothing really planned to any any ambitious thing to plan since it's about to be finals week and stuff. So just All gonna right. take it lightly. Fair enough, uh, Chris. Uh, I mean, Kristen and I will keep up with uh, Sailor Moon because she likes that show and. Uh, I, I gotta catch up on Yushio Totoro, man. I, I love I, I almost I think I got twelve episodes in. I know they keep going now. And uh I I just want Attack on Titan to come back. Yes. <laughs> just give me that. Hey man. But, it, it's been here, man. You just need to read the manga, man. Uh, if, like, like, like I said, if you really if you really want your Attack on Titan fixed with studio, the people behind Attack on Titan is working on uh, Cabinary. Yeah, okay. Cabinary is really I, yeah. good. Watch, watch, dude, watch one episode. Okay. One. All right. Just I, one. I, I will, I will, that first episode is probably the best episode, first episode that I've seen in like probably this entire year. Probably is it's wow. probably I could say last year too. It's better than any any episode one that came out all last year. Also, that episode yeah. one was phenomenal. I, I I value your opinion, Rico. So yeah, I'm gonna check that out then for sure. Yeah, just one episode. You'd be like, oh shit, you might you might come back here all caught up like I am because of that. Is that, <laughs> is that the Iron Fortress thing? Yeah. 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 Um, as far as I'm concerned, you know, it's kind of like Chris. Like, I just want that Attack on Titan. And and again, man, it's like I was looking forward to the Berserk, but I, when I saw that trailer, oh, <laughs> man, that looks man. like fucking ass. I, I will, I will, I will give it a chance just because I want to see the Black Swordsman arc finally. Oh, yeah, like, no, no, I, I'm gonna I will watch take it. what I can get. <laughs> I'm going to watch it, but it's one of those things that's like, you know, you, you know, you're talking about expectations, right? You're expecting like mm -hmm. a supermodel, right? And then they bring mm -hmm. you in like like a like a cheap a horse. Like, <laughs> like, this bitch doesn't even look good, but I, I want to get my dick wet, so okay. Let's mm -hmm. just do I'm trying this. to bust this nut, man. Fuck. Yeah, you know, fuck it. Let's just do it, you know. Get it over with. Somehow. I guess turn the light, yeah, turn the lights turn the lights off, you know. Yeah, I'm bang <laughs> with the lights off. You know, <laughs> fuck, man. Um Manny, anticipating anything? Uh, I mean, I haven't, I'm, you know, I don't really have anything that I'm anticipating right as of now. I mean, I kind of want to, I, I miss seeing anime movies, you know. Yeah, um, in general, right? Shit, in man. general, I mean, I, that's, I, I it, it was nice. It was actually nice to go into a theater and see, you know, uh, Boy and Beast. So, I mean, I, I'm probably just gonna keep my eyes out on, you know, whatever is gonna, whatever movies are gonna be coming along. Yo, have you noticed, Manny, that um, anime movies are making a resurgence now? Ever since Dragon Ball, um, ever since Dragon Ball Z came back with the movies. Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, now you're seeing, you know, you know, they now they have all these. Now there's a lot more movies. I mean, granted, there was still a lot of films, but they're just kind of like they're kind of along the lines of like Ghibli films. They're not really action films. They're just yeah, kind you of want like, action. Yeah. You know. Give me the action. Yeah, all right. Exactly. Um. <laughs> um Lorraine, what about you, man? Um, you know, I'm just gonna be watching everything that I've been watching weekly. Hopefully, you know, that's like the thing I need to focus in on to actually finish something. Yeah. Um, because I intentionally finished um, what that fucking um, Arjun, because that was my go to sleep anime. Like, oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> because it's like the um, because it was in dub, so I didn't have to pay fully attention to it before I fell asleep. So mm -hmm. um. I need to find something to replace that, but I'm thinking about re-watching Sakamoto Desuka. Mmm. <laughs> <laughs> man, I hear nothing but good stuff about that one. 
Yeah, mm. from a comedy standpoint, is a yeah. Okay, tell me how that is, so I can. Okay, I'm not sure to tell you. Um, let's see. Um, the Iron Tower where Vic was talking about now. Yeah, Cabinary. Just call it Cabinary. Okay. You're good. Um, the Joker game. Joker game. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, this production IG does that, so... Yeah, you know. I heard good things about Joker game. Um, and that's pretty much it for the most part, man. I'm just... Like, right now, I'm just going to lay off Boku no Hero Academia, man, because, you know, I know what's going on in it because I read the manga, and from what I can see, it's following the manga pretty well, so no things going to be surprising me, so I'm just going to wait until, like, the big-ass fight scenes come out and start watching it, too. Mm. Yeah, you, you you definitely take your your um the anime that you've already read approach far different than I do. Cause for me, well, how do you take it? I was saying for me, usually if I if I read something, I can't wait to see it animated. I don't give a fuck what it is, you know. But the thing is, though, like if it excites me, sometimes like when I watch anime and it excites me so much, mm-hmm. I read the manga because I can't read. Like you, you yeah, see- no, no, no. I'm talking about as far as anime that you. That are that is airing, but you already know what's gonna happen because you read the manga. Yeah. Okay. That was not not something that you don't know what's gonna happen because so, you didn't read the manga. So why post you take? Do you just like watch it all the way through or something? Yeah, I, I want to see how good it's adapted, and I want to see all those scenes adapted and animated. And you no, know, it's just like I don't know. It's like eating a really nice cake, and then eating that cake again for me with <laughs> extra like toppings, because you know you're not gonna get the sound, the animation, the color, and all that stuff. On yeah, your favorite thing. Like the base, I don't even know what like the base of the cake tastes like, man. You know, I don't need that frosting shit. I don't need the sprinkles. The sprinkles shit ruins it for me. After Not like. sprinkles, but the if you had a cake and it didn't have frosting, man. I don't know, man. I like me yeah. some motherfucking frosting. But sometimes the frosting's not good, man. Sometimes like you know the cream. Oh, yeah, true, true. The toy frosting ain't that good sometimes. The toy <laughs> frosting can get a little stale. It can get a little like hardened, but. Oh, I mean, man. this is, this is we talking about Studio Bones frosting, man. Uh, come on, you can't pass on that shit. That's some good ass shit. <laughs> yeah. I, I I peeped it, I peeped it, but like I was like, okay, like next episode. Oh, he's doing the training thing. He's like, it's so yeah, bad. I yeah yeah I know I know definitely for those um the, that began because I said that in my my little um episode impressions that I do now on my on my YouTube that 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 Yuzuku origin story I didn't. I I I wanted to get into the characters that I know and love, and that's what we actually got in episode five, introducing all of those ca- characters. I was like, yes, we're finally here. So yeah. I know what you mean as far as that. Yeah. So like it's 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 kind of like it's kind of hard, but it's not not at those exciting parts that I'm mm-hmm. like watching the yeah. anime because because when you because when you were reading it, those aren't the, those aren't the parts that got you hyped when you were reading it initially, you know. In the anime that I can uh, yeah, it, it was kind of what got me hyped because you didn't know what was going to happen, you know? It was just I don't like, know. When I, was, when I was reading the Izuku origin story stuff, I that's not what sold me on it. It sold me once I started to figure out about characters like Shouto and whatnot. Mm. That's when I got hyped. So when I saw an anime, I was like, oh, I feel the same way that I did when I was reading it. It's it's the beginning of an anime, you know? It's, it's okay. Anime. So I know what you mean. Know what you mean. All right, anything else, Lurie? Um, that's it, man. I'm just gonna ride out and like stay by my computer, click and refresh, open Tokyo Ghoul update. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know when that comes out, so you don't have to be doing that anymore. Um, it's weekly, but like I heard that it's on a little break right now. So. Oh, uh oh. Okay. Yeah, like I like where I caught up at is like a big ass cliffhanger. I'm like, what the fuck? I'm like, oh. <laughs> All right, yeah. Rico, what you got, man? Um, I want to um. Honestly, for anime, it's, it's as far as anticipating stuff. I'm like I said, the season's already starting. I'm already watching everything that I am anticipating. So, honestly, it's as far as anticipating stuff, nothing until next season. So, like Berserk and all all the stuff that comes out in the summer. Um, my manga game has been heavy, so it's more, I've been <laughs> focusing on that more than more than uh, anything. Honestly, more than even like video games. I should have the Dark Souls Platinum by now, but I don't. Because Yo, shit, I because of it. manga. Yeah. I made him a manga demigod. Mm. <laughs> More like a manga he can can be be Watch out, nigga. <laughs> hey, Kratos is a demigod, too. He though, is, so. mm, but he's so. a guy killer. Mm. Yeah, that is also true. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, 
I, I, yeah, we should talk about that ghost in the shell thing real quick. Uh, what are you guys' thoughts on fucking um, Scarlett Johansson? Oh, man, why? Like, the thing is, though, like, um, we got to, like, start placing blame on the actors, too, that take these roles. You mean that she shouldn't? The thing about it, it would have been another white woman, you know? True, but still, if it if it was the if it was the early two thousand, be it'd be Kate Beckinsale. Oh, <laughs> and, if it, and if it was the nineties, it'd be what's her face, um, Lilu. You know, yeah, it'd be Mila Jojo. It would have been it would have been another white woman. It would have been another white woman. I still think that like it's it's got to the point where this is ridiculous. We can't go to the movies watching bullshit like this. <laughs> here's, the, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Here's the thing that's hap- that, that's that's happening with this, and I'm gonna break it down. Break it down. Okay, jo- Ghost in the Shell is a no- is obviously a known property. A lot of people seem to know. They know the name, right? And also, when you look at the show, the characters don't look Japanese. They look Western. That's the other thing. Now, number one is a. Uh, you're gonna make a, a people, a, a bunch of people, go to a film that they don't have a full understanding of. They just know the name. What's the best way to get people into seats? You pick an actress who people know, who's in stuff right now, Scarlett Johansson. And not to mention, there's not, a, you know, it's sad to say, but there's not one Asian actress that is that uh, th- that oh. level. Of Scarlett Johansson. That would put people in seats. But the thing is, Manny, why would you pick up a property that you need to do that for? Because, because they only care about the name. Because That's they only it. care about the name. They don't care but about making it. They, 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 see, they see it. It's it's the same thing. It's the same thing. Why why a whole bunch of you know crazy comic book movies were starting to get made you know back in the day. It's like okay, well, you don't know anything about this. Why? Because it's a comic book. It's a comic book movie, and it's a, something that uh, a certain sect of people know. Hmm. Yeah, it's not. It's not for them. It's not about getting it true to the original source. It no. is about getting something that's recognizable out there to bring in a lot of money. Yeah, that's all they care about. You know, and that's just the sad reality of it. I don't agree with it, but that's just how it is. You that's know? how it is. I mean, you know, why? You know. Uh, what was it? There's a, there's a couple of uh, you know uh, the, you know a couple of films. It's like why did that get made? You know, it's because, yeah, because of money. You know, because of money. But the thing is though, like history shows that these shits flopped. These shits oh, flopped. Yeah, like, but you, but they don't but they don't see that. They see oh Scarlett Johansson's in this. Okay. Exactly. That's that, what they're yeah. that's what they're that's what they're banking on. They're banking on the fact that, that most people out there know who Scarlett Johansson is. They don't know what the fuck a ghost in the shell is. Yeah, but <laughs> it, it's it's doomed from the start. I don't blame oh, her yeah. for taking a payday. Oh, I mean, yeah. at the end of the day, she has to work. Like that's fine. She's like, yeah. oh, you're you're the major. Okay, well, I'm not gonna blame her for taking that. I blame Avi Arad for being a terrible fucking yes. producer. Yes. And, oh yeah. Please stop making movies. See, but, now, again, you know, but, again, but again, you know, like Manny, like you said, though, they could not have cast an Asian woman in this because nobody would go see this movie. Exactly. But here's the thing. There is the opposite side of this where they essentially hire – they, you know, also it's sad to say, but if you don't have a, a, a Caucasian person as the main role or at least a certain amount of Caucasian people in a film, the budget gets low. Exactly, and that's still true today. That's you know? still true today. If you were to stick an, you know, granted, I mean, if you did stick stick an Asian actress in there, you find, you know, you could take the chick from fucking Pacific Rim. You put her in the film, right? Who she looks exactly, exactly like fucking the main oh, yeah. You put her in the film and just make. But the thing is that that means to do a film like a Ghost in the Show, you'll get a shit budget after just for the plain fact of her being the main the main character in the film. Yeah, it's like okay, she's Asian and she's not really popular. We're gonna slash your budget by half. Exactly. You know? And Which that's, is again, that's horrible. Again, yeah, it's horrible. But again, that's the reality of it. I'm not condoning it. I think it's fucked up. But that's how Hollywood works. You, you know, know he, here's the here's the other thing. You know, they could have they could have just they could have just gotten a they, you know what if they took a, an actress like um, what's her face who plays Night Nurse. What if oh, she Rosario really Dawson? Dawson? What if you took Dawson. Rosario Dawson, just totally cut it, cut the cut that out of the, the equation, <laughs> and made her the major? That'd be interesting. But it, you know, the way I see it, it's like I if still, you're really I gonna still be upset. I'm oh not. yeah, it is upsetting because yeah. it's like why? 
I don't see a difference between a white woman playing her and a, and a like a whatever the hell Rosario Dawson is. I don't know what the she's fuck Hispanic. She is. Yeah. Hispanic. I no. thought she was black, but anyway. Um, no, yeah. just, <laughs> you can be both. My point is, you either get you get her or Scar- Scarlett Johansson. It's the same shit. It's not an Asian actress, you know. Um, but, yeah, I think the biggest issue is that the Asian community is upset because there's not even roles out there for them. And like finally, like a role pops up, it's, it gets taken from them. By I'm gl- I'm glad you bring that up actually, because you know you're talking about the Asian community in America. In Japan, different story. Half of them, okay, one half of them is like it's Hollywood. What do you expect? The other half are like, hey, that's great. We're gonna get a, a very popular Japanese um thing in American cinemas. So yeah. the Japanese are actually not upset about this. They're actually, for the most part, okay. Like some of them are like, I don't know why she's not um, Asian, but at the same time, this is Hollywood. We weren't expecting an Asian woman. The Japanese exactly. were very like, like, um, you know, they were very logical. calm about this. You know, they're logical about it. Huh? They're very logical about it. Yeah, but exactly. Like, yeah, when you hear their arguments, like, yeah, that makes sense. You know, they they already knew it was going to happen, and then at the same time, they're very happy. And I can't blame them for this. They're I very happy. They're very happy that a very popular Japanese uh, franchise is going to get worldwide recognition now. You know, I don't know. Like I, um, I was looking off a Kotaku article. They like to do this sometimes, but like, um, I saw that same one. I know that was a good article. That's the one I, but, yeah, like a lot of them are indifferent. Didn't yeah, are, for the most part, yeah. There's yeah, no, like, no, no one got hot headed like Americans did. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Yeah, that's true. I think mm-hmm. I think you know for America it's also just a very hot button topic. Every you know, you know, diversity is 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 the thing now. Yeah. So now now everybody goes into outrage mode when the minute that something like this happens. I mean, they've changed the race of other characters in other films many times, and you never saw like, oh, hey, oh, this is, what is this now? Well, it, it don't, you know, it, it, if you whitewash somebody, that's where the problem is. I mean, granted, it did happen on Avatar, but then Avatar was like, that film would have had a whole Asian cast. Yeah, that that would not fly, you know? Yeah. Not in America. You know, and then it goes back to the whole thing. It's like, when you, whenever you, like, blackwash a character, no one cares, right? But when you whitewash a character, you do care. I kind of I cared. I was like... I, I don't need these characters to be white, a black watch or anything. I want new characters. Oh. Yeah, that are diverse, right? I feel you, man. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, I don't know. I'm probably not gonna watch it. Not really because of Charlotte Johansson. I don't care about that. It's because of Abby Arid. Because <laughs> he's a horrible producer. Yeah. I have no faith in this movie because of this man. You know. But like, that's my my thing about it. It's like okay, we're, you know. Like here we go. Abby Arid's gonna fuck up something else. You know. Thing Remember, he has the rights to a lot of fucking video game movies. He still yeah, he has does. the rights to fucking Metal Gear, by the way. I know, I know. No. And no, Kojima's was not involved anymore. Yeah. Another thing that put it into perspective for me was when, like, I was reading from the Kotaku comments of the movie, and, like, someone, a Japanese person said, like, hey, we kind of did the same thing with Attack on Titan, where, like, all the characters are, like, different, you know, races of people, like, German, Russian. It was hardly any Japanese people in Attack on Titan if you, like, followed the, um... The yeah. War. Yeah. yeah, but again, the flip side of that, you think a Japanese movie is going to have, you know, like only one or two Japanese people. No, they're not going to do that, you know? Yeah. Um, they're going to go and, pick the popular, the popular, like popular or, you know, attractive looking Japanese people of the time. Yeah. And, you know, just for the record, besides the fact that the movie looked like fucking shit, that, the main reason I refused to watch Attack on Titan, because, you know, the whole thing was like, you know, the Japanese people or Asian people in general are pretty much extinct, right? So now there's nothing but Asian people. I'm like, okay, you're totally deviating too much now. I'm not watching it. But then again, anime, like, you know, what is it? Live action anime movies have always been terrible. So that's the other thing. There's a North Star. Yeah. Oh, man. Oh. I watched that, actually. I watched that movie and, like, I um, hit. Did your insides hurt? It sucked. <laughs> it did. I it sucked. Hurt. Did your insides hurt? Punch me. Did you feel? Did you feel? Did you feel like like Kenshiro just did his uh his uh? Punch <laughs> You're already you? dead. Well, like, <laughs> well, like the thing is though, you don't feel it. You'd be like, oh, that tickles. Then you die. <laughs> It'd be too late, you know. But um, I talked to Dante Basco. He was in that movie one time. Like I asked him about it. Yeah. And, he didn't say anything bad. He was like, oh, I remember that movie. Yeah, I worked with the late blah, blah, blah. Like Sean Penn's brother. Oh, he, did, he didn't apologize profusely. <laughs> <laughs> no, he didn't. Yeah. 
Man, um, he, 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 he don't care. He, don't care. Stars, he just so. was catching. Dante was just catching a check right there. Yeah. He's like, nobody's hiring me after Hook, so. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> Let the man run out. <laughs> <laughs> right, uh, and the last thing, Manny, quickly, what what did you discover uh, this weekend? Very interesting. Well, what, 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 what? Man, talk Ghost in the Shell, motherfucker. Oh, yes, the Ghost in the Shell. So I was at the Image Anime in, in New York City, and I was in. Uh, I was looking on the shelf of said stuff, and I found that there was a new... It was called Ghost in the Shell, the new movie. And it looks like it's the style of the new shows. So I don't know what it is. I think it might be one of those um, uh, where you take the... Um, where you t- they take the episode... And, you know, they take the series episodes and then combine them into a movie, kind of like what they did with the Gurren Lagann films. Oh, are you talking about Ghost in the Shell or Rise? What the it's, I, think they, not, I, think they, I think they took a Rise. I think they took a Rise and just com- turned it into a film, which is weird. I don't know what it is, but, I, you know, I have to do a little more research on it. But, yeah, I just saw that. And I was like, oh, this is interesting. And why did they call it the new movie? <laughs> yeah, I heard that a Rise wasn't that good. Yeah, I heard the same thing. Yeah, that's what I heard. Disappointing. Yeah. But... but yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, By the way, I was going to make an announcement, but I'll save that for two episodes from now. Okay. <laughs> you know, we'll save that for two episodes from now. You know, um, so Manny, anime of the month for next month. What you got for us, man? I, I have actually a little bit of a of a, uh, a visual... A oh, visual shit, Lorraine, to man, he's going into your territory, to bro. To go with this. Okay, oh, so... The visual god. <laughs> so the uh, the anime is actually going to be the is going to be something that I actually have original artwork from. Oh shit! So let's see what you can if you can guess what that is. JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. It's going to be it's going to be the original OVA. Oh, oh, it's, like, it's a it's a mini series, so it's going to be fun. Yo, how much did that cost you? Actually, didn't cost me very much money at all because nobody gave a shit at the time. Wow. Yeah, yes. that was old. It was when no one gave a fuck about JoJo's Bizarre nobody, Adventure. They, that series came out. It came, you know, because I was a, I became a fan of the JoJo Bizarre Adventure from the from the Capcom video game. Yeah, the video game. Yeah. So when I saw that there was an, uh, so there was an OVA series, I was like, oh my god, this is so cool. You know, I I personally enjoyed it, but at the same time, it's like. You know, when I went, I, I went to one of the comic conventions. The guy was selling bunches of, of friggin' animation cells, and I saw that one. And I was like, "What? This thing is only like I, I think I only paid like maybe fifty bucks for it. Nothing." Wow. So yeah, and it came with the original with the original uh, paper paper animation there too. So I was like, "Do it." So, yes. All right, so there you go, people. What what made my de- made that my decision was because I saw you guys were talking about it and I was like you know what have these guys actually seen the original one or seen the seen no. the miniseries I was actually intending on seeing it but I didn't have any plans on seeing it anytime soon so, so it's it, it, you know it's good. short it's short but sweet you know and it gives oh, you no, I definitely wanted to I definitely wanted to check mm-hmm. it out so that's a good choice I, I I did want to I did you know granted I did want to throw in wanted to um put the show Lane in, but I, at the same time, I feel like that show might be a little bit too boring for people because that one's a little Shit. bit of a of a hard sell. So I figured, you know, something a little bit more, a little bit more lighter and more, you know, fighty. <laughs> yes, fighty. <laughs> All right, so that's pretty much it for Otanime. Uh, we'll be back next month with the anime of the month and all that other jazz. So once again, our show is Tony Polanco, and tonight's joined by Ricky's son, one, the only one. Man. It is what it is, and I just want to fucking. <laughs> I just want Berserk not to suck. I just want Berserk not to suck. Same here, brother. Same here, man. Oh, Larry Williams. Man, I just gotta believe, and you know who he is, the Mark God. <laughs> Emilio Lopez. Believe it! <laughs> Chris Seeley. Hey, take care, everyone. And Carlos Romero. There's. All right, people. Peace out. Peace.